Welcome to I'm Your Target Demographic. Today we are talking about television shows based on comic books and superheroes. Uh, there's a lot out right now, so I thought I'd run through my thoughts, but also I want to hear your thoughts. Uh, sometimes you don't have enough time to watch all the shows, so it's good to hear some perspective in which shows you should be watching. So, let's dive in. Let's start with the DC shows. Uh, we're going to start with probably, I think, the newest DC show, and it also might be the first to be cancelled, Constantine. Uh, Constantine is based on the character John Constantine, who is a member of the Justice League Dark, so if you're interested in Constantine and the show does get cancelled, uh, check out that video that I put up about the Justice League Dark, and they might have a potential movie coming out, which could be really cool. But the TV show of Constantine didn't do so hot. Uh, I watched it every week, I liked it, but there were some major flaws. Uh, it dragged like crazy. There would be filler episodes. You know, the pilot came out and then the second episode felt like a filler episode. Like the story didn't progress fast enough. So there were episodes that had zero consequence. Um, and that's just not good. There was a really strong through line that they could have emphasized and they missed out on that opportunity. And they also missed out by having kind of a weak finale. Um, and if the show gets canceled, that is the series finale. And it just wasn't great because it didn't answer anything. Uh, this kind of story that you would thought would be a season long arc wasn't really solved. Just there were too many episodes that felt kind of like Monster of the Week episodes. Just some weird decisions. Wasn't paced well. I had no problems with the guy that played Constantine. I wouldn't be upset if he came back as Constantine in other iterations. But I would totally understand if the show was cancelled. I liked it but there were some major flaws. If it gets moved to sci-fi, there's some definite lessons that they can learn. Um, so if it exists on the sci-fi channel, that would be awesome, but they would definitely need to speed things up and cut out the fluff. Next up, let's talk about the oldest show on this list, which is Arrow. Uh, Arrow is on the CW, and I kind of wasn't paying attention to it for the first season. It looked like kind of a Smallville-esque story, and I love Smallville, but I was like not really invested. I didn't know who the Green Arrow was, but when the first season went on Netflix, I binge watched it, and I am just in love with that show now. Arrow is dark, but it still manages to have that sense of kind of comic booky realism. You know, like villains will show up and you're like, okay, I guess that guy can just mind control people. Like it's, it's kind of dark and gritty, but it still has those elements that make it very much a comic book story. Um, the effects are surprisingly good. The acting is surprisingly good. It's just a really fun show. Uh, the first two seasons are streaming on Netflix now, so if you're curious about Arrow, uh, watch it. It's probably, on this list, the most reliable show, that kind of every episode is usually pretty good. Um, so I would definitely check out Arrow, and if you watched a few episodes you weren't into it, um, maybe try it again, you know, if that was a while ago. Second season is incredible. There, it's just a, a pretty good show, um, so I would give it a chance. And then in the second season of Arrow, they introduced The Flash, which now has his own television show. And even though they're set in the same world, Flash is a very different show. Flash is funnier. Uh, it's much more colorful, vibrant, lighthearted. Um, and their heroes and villains are much more abnormal, where Arrow is kind of stuck in realism. Like, his enemies are just really good fighters. But in The Flash, he's fighting against metahumans, so people with crazy abilities. They can control the weather, they can go nuclear and just explode. Uh, so it's kind of just a much more outlandish story, but the effects are really good. And having all of these metahumans each week shows that you can have people with powers and still have it be affordable, uh, which another show on this list was hesitant to do, but I think now Flash is maybe reaffirming that that's an option. The guy that plays The Flash is really good, and I'm upset that they're not making a better effort to connect their DC universes, uh, because I'd love to see him in the movie of the Justice League with, you know, the other characters, but that will not be happening. So they kind of have this strange Flash and Arrow universe, but then the movie universe, and then Gotham is kind of in its own thing. Um, so I'm a little upset they kind of didn't get their stuff together, but on their own, Arrow and Flash, that universe is really fun, uh, and Flash is a really enjoyable TV show. And then our last DC show that's on this list, Gotham. Gotham is probably the most disappointing show on this list uh, because it is just missing the mark in so many ways. There are just so many story holes that things just don't make sense. 
the, there's plot holes that are crazy that they try to do this kind of mobster underground like kind of what's gonna happen and it, no one cares you know no one cares about any of that story the character of fish mooney played by jada pinkett i am just tired of seeing i don't care about that story um it just doesn't make sense and then they try to shoehorn in so many batman villains so it's set back when batman's a kid but they're trying to plant all these seeds this guy grows up to be the scarecrow but this is going to hurt the show because we will never see the scarecrow right they're gonna say this is the guy that turns into the riddler but you will never see the riddler this is the guy that's gonna become robin but he's not even born yet you know it's like what it's just setting us up for all of this stuff that's never going to happen i mean unless they do a time jump and they say 20 years in the future you know and they're not going to but it's just kind of setting us up if we become invested in the show we're never going to see these things happen uh, I don't I don't have anything against Ben McKenzie as James Gordon but they they make him unlikable they make him stilted they make him uninteresting um, his soon to be wife because if you know anything you know that they get married uh, is super uninteresting and making horrible decisions it's just not super interesting to watch they're making weird story choices and they focus so much on foreshadowing to something that we'll never see it's just frustrating to watch so i don't think gotham's gonna last long but i think it'll do until we see the next version of batman on the big screen which will hopefully launch a new franchise but for now in this vacuum it's okay but it's probably the worst show on this list and then let's hop over to Marvel, where we've got two shows to talk about. The first is Agent Carter, which is finishing up right now. So it's only really one season. I don't think it's intended to be more seasons. And because it's on this kind of limited release, it's concise. It's a tight story. They know here's the beginning, here's the end. They're not worried about season two. So it makes it a very tight story. And it works. It feels fast. Things are constantly happening. The story's progressing. There's no filler episodes. They don't have time for that. Um, there's some incredible acting work. It's nice to see some history in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So you're seeing people and you're like, oh, that's this guy's dad. And it works as opposed to Gotham where you'll never see the present day. Here in Agent Carter, we see stuff that we have reference to. You know, we see Howard Stark, Tony Stark's dad, do something and you're like, oh, that's like Tony Stark does. Like you have both frames of reference and it totally works. And Agent Carter proves that kind of Marvel can delve into these little side stories you know, little corners of the universe that are interesting. And I don't know if they're gonna go the route of every season having a new show or continuing on with seasons of Agent Carter. But I would be okay with every year we get like a 12, 13 episode arc of some story. You know, which is similar to what they're doing on Netflix. So it's a similar formula. Like who could sustain a show for that long? Or who is a character that deserves a little more time? Um, I like that idea. And then we get to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which it's probably the most divisive show. Uh, some people still really love it, and some people just absolutely hate it and think it's trash. Um, I'm on the fence. It, season one was not great. And I think everyone, even fans of the show, can agree that season one was a bit of a letdown until Winter Soldier happened. And then it kicked into gear, you kind of got what the show was, you understood what was happening. Now it was kind of a you know, rogue group of agents trying to survive without all these resources. It was now interesting, there were things at stake, and it really tied into the events of the movies, where before Winter Soldier, it, it didn't connect a lot, it wasn't, we weren't invested in it, where now it meant something. And then they're going to step above. They're saying, we're gonna introduce the Inhumans in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And the Inhumans have a movie coming out in a couple years, so they're setting the foundation for the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's not going backwards, it's not saying, Let's take all these movies and reference little things that happen in those movies. They're going to watch the movies and say, in the movies we need to reference things that are happening in this TV show. It's really smart. It makes both of them essential to watch. You know, if you want to understand the movies completely, you should have watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So it's a really smart marketing move, and the Inhumans give them some flexibility. Earlier I said that Flash wasn't afraid to include metahumans, and it feels like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was at first. They were like, we're going to be real people dealing with kind of non-super villains. Where now they're saying, we're going in humans. 
we're going to introduce crazy stuff, people with crazy abilities. And Disney and ABC and Marvel, they have the money. So it looks like they're going to go big and start actually introducing some kind of bigger, more spectacle-focused villains, which is really cool. Uh, I mean, from what we've seen so far, like characters like um, The Absorbing Man, that was awesome. And it just takes little things to make them believable in this context. So Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. started off really low, getting better, but it's still pretty unpredictable where it's going to go. So that's probably the biggest risk on this list, but it's still really enjoyable. And if you want to know, if you want to appreciate the movies the most, watching that show is probably pretty important. So those are all the shows that I have feedback on. I know like Walking Dead is considered like a comic book TV show, but I haven't started it yet. It's on my list. Um, there's other shows that might be based on a graphic novel or something, but I don't watch them. Those are the ones that I know about that I can speak to. So now, tell me which ones you watch and which ones you like. Because I might watch Gotham, but I don't really like Gotham. So tell me below, kind of what's your favorite, what works for you, um, and which ones do you feel like, oh, they, they messed up at this point, they could have been so good, or I'm glad Constantine is canceled. You know, what is your thoughts on these shows? Um, and then, I'm super excited to talk about when Marvel does launch its Netflix series, we'll have this other kind of uh, whole cast of characters to talk about and how they work on television. So super interesting, but let me know your thoughts below. Um, as always, make sure you head over to Facebook to our official page at facebook.com slash IAYTD. Uh, give us a like and make sure you subscribe, like this video. Um, and there's a bunch up right now. I think right now we're at like 40 videos. So make sure you're watching other stuff, comment. Uh, this is all about having conversations. So find other videos and let me know what you think of them. So thanks for watching. See you later.